this video, we are going to graph exponential functions showing intercepts and end behavior. Remember that the original exponential formula was y equals a times b power x, where a is the constant coefficient and b is the base, x is the exponent, where a is not equal to 0 and b is positive and not equal to 1. If a quantity grows by a fixed percent at regular intervals, the pattern can be depicted by these functions, exponential growth and exponential decay, where the exponential growth is y equals a times 1 plus r power x, and the exponential decay is y equals a times 1 minus r power x. So in the growth and decay functions, the 1 plus r and 1 minus r replace the b in the general form of the exponential function. You will notice that in these new growth and decay functions, the b value in the growth factor has been replaced either by 1 plus r or 1 minus r. So here is the exponential growth and the exponential decay. And here are the parameters, where a is the initial value, the amount before measuring growth or decay, r is the growth or decay rate, and x is the number of time intervals that have passed. Here is the standard form of an exponential growth or decay function, where f of x equals a b power x, where a is the initial amount, b is the constant growth if b is greater than 1 and b is the constant of decay if b is between 0 and 1 and x is usually the time. Exponential growth functions are often used to model population growth. As an example, the population growth of a species of rabbits whose population grows at 200% each year. People working in finance use the exponential decay formula to help with calculating compound interest on loans taken out and investments being made in order to evaluate whether or not to take the, those loans or make those investments. The graph of the exponential function have an asymptote, and an asymptote is a line that a graph approaches. Here are two graphs, one for the exponential growth and the other is for exponential decay. As you see here, the asymptotes here in these graphs are the x-axis. To find the domain, range, and end behavior of the exponential growth and decay functions, the first thing is the equation for each of them. Second is the domain and range. The domain for both of them, as we see from the graph, the domain is all the real numbers and the range is all y greater than zero or positive y. Also to find the intercepts. We have only one y-intercept in each of the exponential growth and decay functions and we have no x-intercepts at all in either growth or decay functions. The end behavior of the exponential growth function. As x increases, f of x increases as you see here from the graph. Also as x decreases, f of x approaches zero. For the exponential decay, as x increases, f of x approaches 0, and as x decreases, f of x increases. Here's an example. Each time you fold a piece of paper in half, it doubles in thickness. If a piece of paper is 0.05 mm thick, then you can determine the thickness y of a piece of paper given the number of folds x with the function y equals 0.05 times 2 power x. Identify the key features of the function. Graph it 
and then identify the relevant domain and range in the context of the situation. So here is the exponential function of this situation and part A identify the key features. The key features are the domain, range and end behavior. Because A is greater than 0, which is 0 0.05, and B is greater than 1, that is 2, y equals 0 0.05, 2 power x is an exponential growth function. And the domain, we know that it is over the real numbers, and the range is all y positive numbers, which is greater than 0. The y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. So we're going to substitute x as 0 here in this equation to find the value of y. So it will be 0 0.05 because remember any number to the power of 0 is 1. So the y-intercept is 0 0.05. For the end behavior, we know that because it is an exponential growth function, so as x increases, y increases, and as x decreases, y will approach 0. Now, to graph the function, we have to make a table of values. And we round to the nearest unit. Then plot the points and draw a curve to approximate it as follows. So here is the table of values for x and y. We find the values for x, we get any points like negative numbers, like negative 2, negative 1, and we take the 0, of course, and we take two positive numbers. We don't have to take all four numbers. Then we substitute these values of x in the equation y equals 0 0.05 times 2 power x to find the values of y. After that, we plot the points for x and y on this graph. You will find the graph will look like this. The last part of our problem is that identify relevant domain and range. Because the number of folds cannot be negative and must be counted in integers, the potential domain is the set of positive integers only, and the potential range is the set of real numbers greater than or equal to 0 0.05. For more practice exercises, you can click on the link in the description part of the video below. I hope this video was useful. If you like it, please press like, subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. So, to the next video. Bye.